Hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum. How are you guys doing? I hope fantastic. My name is Yusuf Haq. I'm a health and fitness behavior change coach. I work with incredible women from all over the globe, helping them achieve their health and fitness goals through the lens of behavior change. Talking about behavior change, this this topic today is huge when it comes to behavior change and how the different seasons of our lives can actually impact our behavior. And this is the perimenopause. Oh, the joys, right? Now, there's a lot of there's a lot of misinformation around there's there's information around menopause, right? Which is starting to to get out there, and people are becoming more aware of it. But there's not a lot of information around perimenopause. Right. Now, a perimenopause is a period before you hit menopause. In fact, menopause is just a moment in time. Is the is the is the the 12 months, the exact 12 months that you haven't gotten your period and boom, you're at menopause. And straight after that, you're a postmenopause. So in fact, a woman is either a perimenopausal, which can be up to 10 years, starting at late 30s. Yeah, I hit perimenopause. I started perimenopause when I was 38. So it can start from late 30s. People don't tell you about that, do they? And it can last up to 10 years or more. So you have the, the perimenopausal period. Then you hit menopause, which is the, the one-year mark of not having a period at all. And then you're postmenopausal. Now you don't have a period at all and all that stuff. Now, what I hear often, and I know this is true for me especially, is a lot of uh, uh, things start to change now everybody experience a, a perimenopausal in a different way some people you know their example their mood and their energy is not impacted at all there's just their cycle that starts to play up a little bit right other people their cycles are fine at the beginning but it's just their moods and the lack of energy and they're always annoyed they're, they they can't sleep they just feel blur 24 7 right one of the most common thing that i hear is oh my god i am you know i am i'm, I'm going through a, a perimenopause or i'm i'm going through menopause as a lot of people call it and i'm gaining weight my metabolism has slowed down right but is that true? Does our metabolism really slow down? Because people, we have this assumption where if, you, if you're going through menopause, let's just call it menopause, because that's what people understand it as, right? Staring at a cake means you're going to gain 10 kilos. That's not how it works. In fact, our metabolism does not slow down when we hit menopause. Not even a little bit. In fact, studies have shown that the only time where your metabolism slows down if you're not someone who exercises or or has a lot of muscle mass and stuff like that. It's when you hit the age of 60 and above. That's when it can start to slow down. And even then, you can slow down the process of slowing down, right? I like that, slow down the process of slowing down, right? By exercising, by resistance training, by engaging in activities and stuff like that. So all in all is no. You don't automatically gain weight just because you hit the perimenopause. You don't automatically gain weight just because you're 40, 45, or 50. That's not how it works. However, the thing that does change is our behaviors. Our behaviors absolutely change. And I'll explain to you how and why. Okay, so what happens in perimenopause is... Is, is estrogen drops. Estrogen is a super important female hormones. It, it's important for so many functions in the female body. One of the functions is that it controls our appetite. Okay? It helps regulate our appetite. Right? Now, when estrogen starts to drop, as we go through the phases of the perimenopause, right, our appetite becomes becomes up regulated it's like ghrelin the hunger hormone goes yeah oh estrogen is going away you know it's kind of like the cat is going away the mouse is coming out to play that kind of thing right so estrogen is going away which is which is one of the hormones that can actually control our appetite is reducing 
our appetite becomes upregulated. So what tends to happen is our appetite increases. We become hungrier. So on one end of the scale, you will find yourself, you're eating a lot more without realizing that you're eating a lot more. So when you talk about energy equation, you know, calories in, calories out, that kind of thing, right? So your calories in on this side of the equation is higher. Now, because when you're, you're going through this stage of perimenopause, chances are you're not sleeping well, the hot flashes are annoying you, you're feeling restless most of the time, you don't have a lot of energy because you're not sleeping well, so your activity level is reduced over the course of the day and all of these things. So what is happening now on the opposite side of the spectrum, the side of your expenditure, your energy expenditure is decreasing. So here your appetite is going up, your energy expenditure is going down, and boom, you're consuming more calories than what you're burning, and that's what is leading to the weight gain. And the best part is, <laughs> all the weight gain is going in one area, just one area, your abdominal region. You know why? Because estrogen also, another function of estrogen, is that it Dis distributes weight, it distributes body fat in all the different parts of the body when it's nice and high, when you're younger, right? So you find for some people like, when when they gain a body fat, it's around their arms, some around their butt, some around the hips, some around the cheeks and all that stuff. When estrogen drops, because the it, because it's dropping, you don't have that hormone now to properly distribute distribute body fat over the course of the body, over the different areas of the body. So all the weight is going in one area, and that is your abdominal region. In fact, the fat that is all in all the different parts of the body literally shifts to your abdominal region. And because of this, is an is a reason why a lot of people who are a lot of women who are menopausal tend to eventually be diagnosed with diabetes and insulin resistance and all of these things. Why? Because of the increased visceral fat around the abdominal region, because that is where the body is storing the majority of of the fat at because estrogen has dropped so you don't have that hormone to help the body nicely distribute body fat in a healthier way okay so no just because you're going through a perimenopause it does not mean you're automatically going to gain a body fat your metabolism does not change this early on what does change though is your behaviors you tend to eat more because estrogen is dropping Right, And also because chances are you're not sleeping well with the hot flashes and all of these things, your activity level reduces. And before you know it, you're eating more calories than you're burning, hence the weight gain. And again, I explained the reason as to why the weight is going around the central region. Now, what I experienced, and this is this is where nutrition, customizing nutrition depend on, and, and here's the thing, there is no specific diet for perimenopause or menopause. It really upsets when people say, oh, you have to have a specific diet. No, you don't. How someone who's 25 year old, 25 year old needs to eat is the same as someone who's 55 year old needs to eat. The only difference being is because of this 55 year old may not have a lot of a lot of expenditure because she's died all the time. You just has to you just have to customize her nutrition because of that, but not because she's menopausal. So there's no specific diet for menopause. There's no there's there are no unique things yeah there's bits and pieces here like soy could be good for you because of estrogen and all of these things but the majority of diet diet does not change much it really the basics don't change much now what i've found for myself the changes that i had to make is and it's actually the changes that i had to make for a lot of the fishassi athletes we you know as they're going through this is their training a lot of people have no idea how to train during this phase because again like i said you're you don't you find yourself not having as much energy right so for me my because i could i could train five days a week i could do a lot of cardio resistance training and all of that stuff but when i hit 
premenopause, my recovery wasn't great. My recovery wasn't great because I wasn't sleeping well. So which meant if I train today, I can't train tomorrow because I'm so 24-7. I'm annoyed. I'm agitated. So I personally had to reduce the amount of training I do. My training volume had to reduce. So how long my sessions were and also my training frequency had to reduce how many times a week I train. So I literally, at the moment, I train three times a week, half an hour each time, and I'm done. And I'm able to maintain my muscle mass. I'm able to alhamdulillah stay healthy and fit. Why? Because I've customized it to me. So your nutrition will need to be customized. Your training will need to be customized, not because of anything, but purely because of how your your body is handling this season in life. If, you, if you're finding yourself tired most of the time, then look at your training. What needs changing there? Do you need to reduce something? Do you need to adjust something? Like now, I hardly do cardio. I hardly do cardio. I don't need cardio. I hardly do. My, my walking, my step count, that is literally the cardio that I do. Right? Other people going through this can do cardio just fine, by the way. Just because I'm experiencing it this way doesn't mean everybody else is, is experiencing that way. Everybody's experience of perimenopause and menopause is unique to them. And this is where a customized approach becomes important. And this is why I hate blanket rules. I hate when people say, oh, you're going through this. You have to do X, Y, Z. Y says who? Show me a research study that says someone going through perimenopause has to do all of these things apart from apart from they do have to sleep well they do they do have to sleep well they have to make sure they're getting enough rest and recovery then they have to make sure they're getting hydrated then they have to make sure they're, they're getting enough protein and vegetables but other than these basics nothing else changes but it's just really down to going hey how are you feeling how's your energy levels what can you do today that kind of thing so yes, your, your nutrition and exercise will have to change based on how you're feeling. But also we need to remember everybody's experience during this season is different. Some people are going through perimenopause and menopause like they don't even feel anything. It's like a breeze. It's like, Oops, my period has stopped and it's been a year, right? Other people struggle so much. They can't sleep. They're, they're bloated all the time. Everything they eat leaves them feeling bloated. They're moody. They're angry. They're depressed. Yeah, it can happen. Other people are in the in, in the middle, like me, alhamdulillah. I've, I've found these strategies that work for me, that's, but that's only because I have the awareness and stuff like that. The same as Fishasi athletes. For some of them, we had to really kind of slow down and say, okay, what can we do here? What can we do there? Until, alhamdulillah, they found what works for them. And they're smashing it, by the way, right? It really comes down to understanding your individual response to menopause and premenopause and what behaviors you're engaging in and tweaking them to what will work for you. So again, if you're struggling, get support. If you're relying on the internet to get information, that, that doesn't set you up for success i can tell you that now because the amount of misinformation that i see out there is shocking because everybody wants to 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 make money out of this thing right so be mindful of where you get your information from okay so number one no your metabolism does not slow down automatically when you hit menopause you don't have to gain weight you don't Number two, it's actually your behaviors that change. So be aware of those and tweak them accordingly. Number three, tweak your nutrition and your exercise so that it is aligned with how you're feeling during this season in life. There is no magical solution. Everybody will have their own individual experience and it's important to figure out what will work best for you. And number four, if you're struggling, get support. All right, my lovelies, that's it from me. I'll talk to you soon. Assalamu alaikum.